She screamed. Crippled babies cried, larcenists have surrendered their tools, dreams began to decrypt, and a flat disc-shaped cloud hovered over a small town in Rhode Island. She screamed and Tessa Turas broke boundaries. Crop dusters wobbled from the turbulence. A little man in a tuxedo smiled in the finish of his brand new car. Countless landfills erupted in newspapers from 1941, reassembled out of the filth to assert their truths that war was coming out of the looming crisis in Europe. Egg cartons on super stop and shop shelves birthed chicks. The seas boiled and rendered titanium useless in the manufacture of nuclear submarines. Two tons of potted plants rose in rebellion and took root and spread across a million kitchen counters through suburban towns along the Connecticut shoreline. Jungles formed on I-95. The Lake Saltonstall Bridge was completed retroactively on schedule. It built itself and forced the lake to suffer its imposition. Water tasted good. Coca-Cola turned to tar, and fossils from early man were found in a Ford dealership in Pittsburgh, making it impossible for Ted Forsyth to close the deal on an 86 Tempo he stole from the condo complex his mother lives in. The smooth curves of the sedan melted into the cracks of the side lot, fusing with the impatient black earth. A lot of people complained of liver spots, kidney stones broke up, and we all called our puppy loves, and we all read palms and slaughtered chickens. Pavement warped into half pipes, and a nation of 14-year-old skaters from 1988 wearing Thrasher t-shirts and listening to Dawkin were temporarily misplaced. Tuna noodle casserole exploded on papered walls, adorned with famous New England barks and schooners. Infant shit was found in cans of Play-Doh, and Michelle played with it anyway. Cuneiform became the nation's official language to prevent the scream from infesting, infesting the sacred word. Signs on Route 80 reflected the change. BMWs smacked into Mercedes in illiterate confusion. Sound barriers broke. Ribs shattered from shaking. Thunder was a number one billboard hit for 17 straight weeks. Her choral score had no breath marks. The tune contained no melody or harmony. Counterpoint and musical composition became obsolete. Oscilloscopes found 12,000 distinct waves merged in her chalkboard scraping wail. Ithaca, New York was purged by the reincarnate legions of slaughtered mystic shamans. Spirit bears carved glorious trenches out of shopping plazas, and the great snakes slithered into Cayuga's precious gorges. 27,000 bathtubs in the town of Guilford were simultaneously turned on and forgotten. Over a period of eight months, the town gently flooded and disappeared, and no one could remember what happened, or if anyone really lived there, and no one went in to check. The Saab Corporation closed its doors, an artery rendered useless. 38 miles away, her sound waves had no decay and reached them. The sonic vibration still strong like the shockwave of the 22nd atom bomb. It tingled parts of their bodies so sensitive and reactive that a mob of indentured servants were compelled to cry out in the bottle-shaped wail of absolute rapture and paste their images on the inside back cover of Rolling Stone magazine. Shrill peasants from 1847 were invited to dine at the White House. They declined walked over to Cafe Lafayette in Madison and torched it after dessert. Her screams reminded Nietzsche to fear God. Hitler read Kaddish. In the Yucatan, Mayan pyramids animated, revealing giant factories that produced quaint souvenirs. The stained glasses of Catholic churches bleached and turned transparent, and we sat, knelt, stood, sat, knelt, stood, sat, knelt. She screamed like every nightmare, every chill up my spine, every unholy chasm that called out from it, Brian, Brian, this is your father. Now open this door.
Thank you. Thank you for indulging that.